Hi, it's Mike with Ubtastic. I'm here at GoToConf 2015. I'm sitting here with Max Demarzi, who just gave a talk about what finance companies can learn from dating sites, or dating sites can learn from finance. I don't know. I'm sure there's some people, you know, don't call me a gold digger kind of thing. I don't know, but uh, it is really funny in my head before I said that. And uh, so, <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for taking the time to uh, speak with me, Max. Uh, so, so that talk is kind of like abstract. What, what is, what does it mean? Sure. So the title was obviously chosen by marketing people who believe that <laughs> Chicago is nothing but finance companies, which oh. obviously we know is not true. But I mean, it's a pretty significant population. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And putting all kinds of finance, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the idea here is not so much about specifics, but really more about the overall theme, which is graphs. Right. Yeah. Is to think of your data as graphs and then the kind of things you can do with it. So for the dating example, we went over things like uh, your friends are friends graph and how usually mm-hmm. you start out with dating people in the real world and then you kind of venture on to the online world from there. Uh, things like a shared interest, shared likes, how people can connect based on the things that they, they mutually find interesting about the other person. Mm-hmm. Um, then we went on to things like the safety graph, finding people who are uh, cheaters, who are already married, mm-hmm. who are looking for some side action and not really into a long distance relationship, or spammers, uh, people who are expecting you to pay 20 bucks to watch them on cam type thing, or even like the professionals who are sometimes on dating sites. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then from then, looked into different finan- uh, graphs of finance. Once again, looking at consumer graphs, um, how vendors, how they interact with each other, who's there, mm-hmm. who purchases from who. Um, you know what kind of items you're purchasing. We're looking at asset graphs, managing the underlying assets of your portfolio, and doing uh, you know funds of funds of funds type analysis down to the lower level um, risk analysis over that whole spectrum. Uh, and there are bits and pieces. Um, traders have social networks, and also analyzing social networks for mm-hmm. interesting financial data, um, like stock tweets. Sometimes you see a tweet that would actually move a uh, uh, you know a stock or I commodity up and down quite a bit, depending on what that information is. Sometimes it's not even true. You have to understand. Like uh, April first, we had the. Um, uh, Elon Musk talking about you know Project W was supposed to be like a, a watch from Tesla. It's not really true. He was, he was talking about you know something else, but it was April first. People thought it was true, and then they retweeted, and, and then you know the stock went up and down for yeah. a few seconds. Some people don't look at the calendar. Yeah, you know, I mean, usually uh, the data you get from finance has, hey, this is an April Fool's joke, but Twitter data doesn't have the disclaimer. Yeah, you know, uh, a few years ago we had a mini crash because somebody tweeted that oh, Barack Obama had been blown up. Oh, right. So we had a few seconds where like everything crashed and then everything came back up, again. <laughs> and people realized how it was just a lie. But that kind of thing can happen all the time. Yeah. I mean, the more real time we are now, uh, the more likely this kind of thing will happen. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, when you're when you're talking about the the uh, impact of, of Twitter and, and looking at a tool like Neo for j so I'm gonna, uh, you know, on behalf of your sponsor here at at, uh, at GoToComp, I'm gonna go ahead and, and say, can you tell us a little bit about what Neo for j is and and how? I mean, when you say graph database. What does it all mean? Yeah, what does that all mean? Sure. So a few years ago, we had this NoSQL movement come around, and NoSQL kind of went two different ways. One way is the let's drop joins all together and not have them. So the document store said, let's bundle up everything into a document and save that so we don't have to do the joins. The key value store said, we don't even know what joins are, we're just key value stores. The column store said, well, we don't do joins very well either, we look at column families and said, we're going to deal with those kind of things. Uh, and that's one way of dealing with not joining, which is not joining. The other way is by forcing those relationships to be first-class citizens. Mm-hmm. So we save relationships down to disk, relationships down to memory, and they basically become pointers in memory. So it's very fast for us to follow a relationship, but it's not very fast for a key value store or someone else to do that kind of mm-hmm. thing. Now, there are some trade-offs. You lose some speed, you lose some rights uh, because of this kind of thing, but if you have a domain that's very graphy in general, mm-hmm. like asset management, security, people, uh, you know, information that is connected, mm-hmm. uh, then we're a great uh, database to put your data in. Right. And, you know, and it's, as far as, like, being involved in the community, I know you're involved with the GraphDB uh, user group here in Chicago. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that and kind of bring us up to speed on, on what's going on in, in that world? Sure. So... Uh, just came off winter, and the last meetup I had was in February at PwC, and thank you to those guys for, for sponsoring us. I don't have a real office downtown, so I'm, I'm kind of uh, in the air as far as where I host the meetups, and I try to bury them. Uh, so actually, if you have a meeting place and you'd like me to come and do a talk um, at your place, please invite me, and I'll be happy to do it. Uh, I'll hopefully, tend to get more going this summer. Um, the meetup group in London, for example, has 2,000 members. They're the biggest um, 
NoSQL meetup group in, in Europe uh, because they have an office there and, and they have multiple people kind of taking care of it. I'm, I'm a one-man army trying to do it here. Yeah. Plus, I fly a lot, so it makes it a little bit tougher. Um, yeah, but if you you know have a space and uh, would like to learn more about Grab Libraries, just please let me know and we can work something out. So working in a community, I mean, there's ebb and flow when you're you're helping to run a community or trying to facilitate it. I mean, is it is it something that has been just you know life circumstances that have been kind of pulling on you and making it hard to to do the user groups, or is, is it maybe a waning interest here in Chicago? What what is it? What is the dynamic that you're feeling? Uh, oh. you're, no, it's not so much as that. It's schedule. Um, yeah. I was home I was home for a few weeks, and then I was in Atlanta, I was in Boston, I was in Houston, and I'm here again. And I try to schedule something a month out, but if Neil says, you need to go to see a customer in Delaware on Friday night, yeah. i got to be there on Monday morning, whatever plans I had are out the window. Uh, you don't know how many uh, plays I missed, uh, musicals and, and so on, doing this kind of stuff, but, you know, my company needs me to be where they need me to be, and i got to do what i got to do. Right. Uh, so the community kind of comes secondary. Um, it's been hard to find other folks who kind of would do some presentations. We have a few customers and they've done presentations, mm -hmm. but I've kind of run out of those. So uh, if you are working on a new for project or a proof of concept or something you want to share, uh, I'll be glad to have you as well. So I'm not the only one doing all the talking either. <laughs> you know, I, I talk yeah. about new for for hours, my God, but uh, at the same time, you know, it'd be nice to hear somebody else's perspective. Right, right. All right and and it, it's crafty be focused, so it could be anything that's... I mean, I don't know. Are there, are there any other... Players out in the in the uh, GraphDB ecosystem. Sort of. I mean, we have uh, we had Titan for a little bit, and then they kind of went to hibernate into the data stacks side of things. Um, Orient is also, I guess, number three or now number two, uh, but they're just not around in Chicago. There, so I wouldn't know anyone um, to even invite to come to a talk. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of in Chicago. GraphDBs is kind of niche to Neo4j. At this point, I mean, I think eventually that will change um, as the space gets bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we could venture out into some of the graph processing engine, so Spark is getting a lot of attention, maybe do some uh, graphics or Spark Lab um, type of stuff. Uh, if someone's interested in wanting to do a talk about that, you have a built-in audience who kind of already knows graphs and can relate quickly, so you can yeah. jump into, hey, show me something cool with graphs, not just right. what they're all about. Yeah, it doesn't always have to be an intro to graphs. Yeah, absolutely. Well, okay. intros are fun, though. I mean, for every thing that you learn, someone else doesn't know it. Right. So right. the more you can share online, the more you can share with people, uh, you're making someone else's day better. Yeah. I mean, we do not have the capacity to learn everything that's being that's going out there. You know, there's 300 databases, there's all these frameworks, every week a new JavaScript framework comes along, you can't learn it all. But if right. someone learns it for you and then tells you the good parts, that's nice to know. Okay. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Mm -hmm.